Hello, welcome back to Free CSD. I am the guy from PlayerBase GR, and we're going to do five minutes. Uh, still responding to comments. Uh, Sabrina Hall asks or mentions that she really wants to try a Showtel, which is the general family of uh, African curved swords. Uh, and how would you interpret that mechanically? Well, one of the advantages or disadvantages of the D&D system is that it's pretty rough and already relatively general and generic. So as Showtels are pretty much uniformly uh, single-handed weapons, it would pretty much just be a short sword or a rapier. So we would give it like a D6 or a D8 maybe in certain circumstances. And because the curved edge, it's basically um, a sickle, uh, is on the inside, and it's specifically meant to uh, reach over um, the shield defense, we might give it a plus two against shields, or even a plus four, uh, and give it uh, some type of piercing or grappling um, qual quality of damage so that if we're striking an enemy who has cloth on or a whole bunch of ribbons or is just covered in toilet paper and, um, uh, you know, gift wrapping, we would have some advantage. The other thing is also, we might also give it a, an AC advantage um, against regular types of attacks because the type of parrying and um, interdiction that a straight sword or a straight spear, that kind of a thing, can interact with are less because you can kind of get around them. That would be my first guess. Um, when I have run games that are um, culturally African themed, uh, it hasn't really come up uh, because, well, I didn't think to bring it up. So thank you, Sabrina. Uh, even though the main character or characters uh, almost uniformly had showtails of one type or another. Now, a showtail specifically refers to the, you know, Kemetic Egyptian one that's basically a sickle off of a, like a straight sword and handle. Um, but the Central African variants, which are just like big bananas, um, pun intended, I guess, uh, which are more curved, are almost like a cross between a machete and a reverse uh, katana or tachi. And so you could, and I believe there are instances of those being two-handed weapons. So you could do a D8, D10, and that would really just come down to play and personal preference and uh, what you were going for. Uh, one side note about that, um, that there is traditionally one like North Central Sub-Saharan African culture and kingdom. I can't remember exactly where it was. It was near Mali. Um, where we have attested, I think from like the 9th or the 11th century, they wore bronze like breastplates uh, and helmets. But most of Sub-Saharan Africa, for very obvious reasons, does not because it's just too fucking hot. And, you know, the advantage that might be conferred by wearing metal armor is deferred by the fact that you're sweating like a stuck pig. Uh, and then soon, very often to become a stuck pig because you can't concentrate, you can't focus, and you're uncoordinated. So most sub-Saharan African armors and cultures don't have a long or a very storied history with metal armor, but that's not the same thing as metallurgy or metal armaments. Uh, you know, metalworking and bronze and iron and steelwork in Africa and in African weaponry, you know, has a storied history and is comparably long as most other cultures. I don't remember exactly who, when, or where uh, had the, the most pervasive use of steel weaponry uh, in long pieces of equipment. Oh, Jesus. 
Oh, wait, no, no, that's it. Aha, see you later, GR, 3CSD. Five minutes every day of just you know, off-the-cuffness. See you later, bye.